you might be thinking, hey, Stan, why all these spells are so bad? Why you don't like those skills? Because they suck. What's up, guys? It's Stan Kosh, and today we are doing skills tier list for Bang Bang Survivor. We have a variety of skills here, but uh, you need to make sure that you're using the right ones in order to be most efficient and don't fail your teammates and be effective. Be mindful that it's for free-to-play players and uh, for someone who is not that far into the game, I am at stage 26 right now. Uh, I'm number 44 on my server, which I think is pretty cool. And that's because I know how to play the game. So let's move on to the tier list and we'll go one skill after another as they unlock. I will explain you how they work and why they deserve their exact spot on the tier list. All right, the first skill is Thermobomb. But this is a very basic skill that's available early on. It's doing fire damage and have some AoE. It have pretty low cooldown, which is pretty cool, but there are some drawbacks. It have really low damage. It doesn't go through the enemies without some specific upgrades. And that means it will hit only the front line. Even if you upgrade it with the multiple attacks, it will still won't be able to penetrate the first line to the enemy back line where the ranged enemies are. And overall, its damage is um, not that great. Yes, you can get super bomb in order to get the penetration plus two, and explode afterwards but it requires level 14 and then you need to get lucky to get this perk in order to be able to use it overall by default this is an okay skill if you don't have anything else and it's also really good if you want to get explosive da damage on your gun that's when it's necessary but only one level of those so in the end it has some potential but overall it's way unreliable and requires too many upgrades to be useful so i will put it on the b tier next one dry ice bomb which is oh well a projectile that doesn't do airway by default it penetrates enemies and it can freeze them as well but in order to freeze stuff you need to get an upgrade so by default it doesn't do that it has pretty low cooldown, but if there are multiple enemies, it will hit just four of them by default. Overall, I wouldn't say it's that great. I used it a couple of times, but I really don't like it at all. So this one will take the D here. It's unreliable, it doesn't do that much damage, and it requires way too many upgrades to be useful, and even then it will fall behind other skills in terms of the damage. Now let's move on to the EM Strike. Now this skill is something insane. First of all, you get it early into the game, it does insane damage, yes. By default, when you just get it, it's just a single strike with a small splash that's not doing that much of AOE damage. But once you upgrade it well enough, it can wreak havoc on the battlefield, especially if you get the EM Pursuit option that will allow it to strike another target if it kills the current target. And if the second strike will kill the target as well, it will strike again and again and again and again so if you will be able to get its damage high enough and use this em pursuit it will do crazy damage to the enemies moreover em explosion gives its way better airway capabilities and if you will be lucky to get the range upgrade as well with the slowdown effect and paralyze and projectiles flying out it can destroy enemies quite easily and even now at uh stage 26 27 it's still the best way to go if you will be lucky with all the upgrades. So I'm obviously putting it as an S tier, one of the best single target spells that have potential to be a um, multi-target AOE spell. And once you get it to level 10, it will no longer reduce damage when getting additional strike, which is even better so you can spam it like there is no tomorrow. Next one is Armored Vehicle. Now this a skill by default i thought it's crap honestly i didn't like it at first but once i tested it it's actually have its usage it does some decent damage on the land targets only though but the main benefit of this skill is that it's slowing down enemies by default and you can upgrade it even further to have the slowdown effect to last longer and uh, to have the stun ability as well that makes it really really good and in the end after the level is over it ends up as one of the top damaging spells uh, skills anyway so why the hell not the main problem with the armored vehicle that it doesn't attack air targets so if you have someone uh, with the air capabilities it will be kind of inefficient so i wouldn't use it on the levels where there are flying enemies and such but yeah overall this is one of the best spells in the game it's not an s tier though because it doesn't do much damage by default i'll put it on the a tier it have 
significant damage if it's upgraded properly, if you have multiple vehicles going, upgrade them to the tanks, etc. They can clean the ground quite easily. But by default, it's a good slowdown effect on the enemies with a bit of damage, but it won't destroy them, so you will need something else to take them down to get that XP to level up. Next one, Energy Beam. Uh, I'm really on the edge with this one, because when I just got it for the first time at the early game when you don't have all the skills available, Energy Beam is really powerful. It's one of the top damaging spells by default without, without any upgrades, but once you will start getting things from here, it kind of falls off, so right now I barely ever take it. In order for it to be efficient, you need multiple upgrades, and even then it won't be that reliable because it shoots only in the straight line, and if it kills all the enemies in that line, the guys on the sides will anyway get close to you, so right now I don't use it that much. Although early game, it's a lifesaver, it can be one of the top damaging spells for you, but right now I would say it's somewhere on the C tier late game. Uh, unless you have specific build for it and you know what you're doing, I wouldn't recommend using it that much. Next one, Guided Laser. Oh my god, I was expecting so much from this spell, but it's so useless. I've seen people using it with the tracking refraction when it reflects, when it's kind of doing more AoE damage, it's good. Another good thing about the Guided Laser is that its upgrades are kind of going together with the AM Strike, with the Energy Beam, and with Electron Transition, I think. So you can get plus 80% damage for both Guided Laser and one of those spells skills. But outside of that, its damage isn't high enough. And even then, if you get it high enough, it still have pretty long cooldown. And during that time, the enemies will come. Moreover, it have really short range, so enemies have to get close in order for it to be activated. I don't know, it's supposed to be a really good single target spell, but I haven't found any good use for it. It's only useful if you have specific build for this. I mean, you need specific upgrades to make it work well. So I usually try to avoid it. I'll put it on the D tier because I really don't like this skill. Next one, a Frost Generator. Now this spell I really liked it when I first saw it. It, it had really cool freeze effect, it has some AoE, but uh, by default, when you just get it for the first time, you will be disappointed. It doesn't have that much damage. Take a look at that. It's not significant at level 8. My god, it doesn't do that much. But this damage isn't like on hit damage. It's like every tick. So I think it's several times per second. I'm not sure. So it's like damage over time while enemies are being frozen, which is really nice. And once you get it to level 6 in order to get the freeze ability straight away, it becomes way better. The way I use it as a crowd control. Obviously, damage from it isn't really close to be useful, but it freezes enemies on point. You can increase its range, and if you can get second cast, it becomes more viable, because the first spell will be cast on the nearest enemy, and the second one will be in the middle of enemy group, freezing a huge amount of enemies. So if you can fulfill several conditions, first one is additional cast, second increased range, and third one prolonging the duration at the cost of the damage, it can be really good at staggering enemies and not letting them anywhere close to your base if you have other damaging spells. So by default, I would say it's a, a B tier, it's situational, but it's like top of the B tier. It's way better than uh, anything else. It can be used quite a lot. I use it quite often when I need to slow the enemies down and I have some damaging spells ready, but... Uh, if you don't have that, don't go for it. You will have low damage and the enemies will destroy your form. Next one is Electron Transition. I really liked it when I first got it because I like how it looks. Those electricity jumps are just fantastic, but in terms of the viability, it's horrible. First of all, it have only five number of bounces by default. That means if you will be attacked by the enemy horde, it won't do that much. It can be viable if you get it as one of your first skills uh, when you start the level, and it can do decent damage to the first few enemies, but once they start swarming, it doesn't do that much unless you will get some required upgrades. This ionization that deals explosion, additional bonuses from spontaneous electronics, etc., but yeah, its damage is very low, even if you get several of those, uh, they are pretty close range, so the enemies need to get close for it to be used. And yeah, guys, I don't like it, it doesn't do that much. The only advantage of it, that it have shared upgrade with the um, EM Spike, I think. 
so you can get both of those with the level up to get extra damage if you got it early on. But outside of that, I wouldn't recommend getting it. It feels pretty useless. So it will go all the way to the D tier uh, together with all those guys. Next one, Cyclone Cannon. When I first got it, I was really surprised how useless it is because it's really unreliable. It can fly whatever it wants. But once I tested it a little bit more, oh my god, this is one of the best spells in the game because it got insane damage. Moreover, it have the wind attack. So when you can't use physical attacks, for example, you don't have that many options to do damage to the enemies. If you can't use fire attacks, you are in trouble again. But this thing can do wind damage and it can defeat some specific enemies as well. And it can keep enemies at bay, pulling them away from your fort. So it will prolong your life a little bit. So yeah, a cyclone cannon is a really good spell. Especially if you upgrade it properly, if you get lucky with the upgrades like range, so it will get wider range and duration, even with the cooldown, which is pretty long, it can still be pretty nice. And uh, if I have ability to take it, this is one of my top picks. So I will put it to an S tier. Honestly, in several runs, even without upgrading it too much, it was one of the top damaging performers. So yeah, it can do quite a decent damage to the enemies. Aerials bomb. I really like the look of it. Like bombarding the enemies feels really nice. But as you can see, it's level five. I haven't really upgraded it that much because it's useless as hell. Even upgraded, it doesn't do that much damage unless you go specific upgrade route and you have a lot of physical damage since it's a physical damage spell, probably there is a way to make it useful. Every spell in the game can be useful, but this one is just better to get something else. The main advantage of this is that it covers most of the battle screen, so it can throw its bombs wherever it wants, and it has some AOE, but you need a lot of upgrades to make it viable, because by default it's a small AOE circle, the damage is low, the enemies don't really care about it. Uh, it can stun enemies for 1.5 seconds afterwards, but with its 7.2 seconds cooldown, it's not enough. I mean, maybe with all those bonuses, passive bonuses you get might become better, but before that it's useless. Like, yeah, 1.5 seconds stun here and here will be good. So at level 18, it will be three seconds stun. Might be viable then, but right now it's a waste of your resources and time. The damage isn't that good. It's pretty useless. The Tier. Let's move on to another fantastic spell, Air Blade. Now, this is the second air spell, and uh, on contrary, with the Tornado Cannon, my god, this is useless. I tried to make it work. I picked it in several runs and tried to upgrade it all the way. It can do decent damage at times, but first of all, penetration is 4, so you need to get upgrades for its penetration to go through the enemies. Moreover, its aim is horrible. If the enemies are right next to your fort, it will shoot straight to the first of them without attacking everyone else. So it will just go to your fort and barely and, and do no damage whatsoever. So it's bad and uh, the damage is bad. And, and I don't really know why it's here in the game. Maybe upgrading it, make it better. But so far, I try to avoid it. Like, anything else is better than this. This is, like, the worst spell in the game so far. So we will give it the worst spot end of the D tier. You might be thinking, hey, Stan, why all the spells are so bad? Why you don't like those skills? Because they suck. When you get to the fuel bomb, though, you will be instantly surprised. At first, when I got it, I thought it's crap. Because it's, like, short range, some goddamn bomb. What can it do? It can do wonders, guys. This is one of top two damaging performers. Uh, honestly, when you get it by default at level one, it can destroy tremendous amount of enemies next to your fort. The problem, its range is tiny. So enemies have to be right next to your fort. And if you have only melee enemies, it can do so much, especially if your enemies are afraid of fire because it's a fire damage. It have really low cooldown and it does decent damage. You can upgrade it in two ways. First one is giving it a burning damage. Second is doing ignition damage. I haven't really figured out which one is better, but both of those increasing its damage tremendously. And main thing about this spell that if you will get lucky and get additional cast or several casts even better, it can fly the first one to the close range enemies and second one all the way to the enemy groups. And then it will burn them down. Usually, like this spell, it destroys the enemy. 
basically if it lands on the enemy they will die you can increase its range so it will do more aoe which is really nice and lower its cooldown by 20 percent so the bombardment will go like crazy and it will destroy everyone like this is one of the best spells and i always take it always take it if i have the ability to do so and if the enemies are not ranged and ground so there are two disadvantages with this spell you have to be in the melee range and you need to be ground enemy don't destroy birds unluckily so yeah overall this is like second best spell for me i use it all the time and it saved me more than once let's put it like that and finally finally drone assault the last spell when i just got it i was really unimpressed i thought it's crap because it's a small drone flight what can it do <laughs> guys it can do insane damage this thing even without any upgrades can decimate the enemies if it won't kill them it will damage them well enough so your other skills can destroy them the problem with the spell though that it just flies around so it kind of bounces the walls and goes uh, in the straight direction and if there are no enemies it won't hit anyone but its dps is really cool i was surprised how useful it is how powerful it is and now this is one of my top spells so i always take this if i can because it can do insane damage to ground and flying enemies the only drawback if the enemies have good physical resistance then it won't do that much damage but you can get upgrade for the stun you can get upgrade for its range so it will be bigger you can get upgrades for its duration and damage and it, it can massacre the enemies and also when the enemies are like right next to your fort and it can be launched horizontally if you like it can just massacre and clear the entire line this is when it shines and it's really really good against the enemy hordes so this spell goes to the s tier as well and <laughs> you can clearly see what kind of spells i take when i go to the run right honestly depending on the stage and type of the enemies i will most likely try to get those three spells at all times probably in this order so we will get the lightning strike then we'll get the firebomb then we'll get this and tornado and if I get all those and upgrade one of those to the maximum, oh my god, I'm golden, I can massacre anything. The rest of those spells can be pretty useful. I clear the stage with the, with the vehicles, no problem. I clear the stage with... No, I never cleared it with the frost. I cleared it with the explosive bombs. That, that worked. Laser, never cleared only with that. I once cleared it with the frost projectile. I don't remember the name. But most of those things, they don't really work. Uh, this thing worked well. The, the bomb worked well once... But, I mean, all those options are just better. Instead of bomb, you can always get a drone. It will be better. Instead of bomb, you can get the fire bomb. It will be way better. You can get tornado that will just sweep the screen and destroy everything. So why the hell do you want those if you have these, right? So yeah, guys, that's my tier list of skills from Bang Bang Survivor. Let me know if you agree or not. It's still uh, a pre pretty personal tier list. So yeah, you might not agree. But personally, I found those skills to be really useful when I go into the team match and uh, the teammate is way stronger. I'm usually coming on top with all those spells. Situationally, by the way, situationally, if you want to support your teammate and you know your damage won't be good enough, then you would like to go with the crowd control. So you take the vehicle, you take the frost, you might take the tornado, you might even take this for some additional uh, AOE stun, and that will do as well. But lightning never disappoints <laughs> so yeah guys if you like the video like it and subscribe to the channel for more content don't forget to check out the video description for additional links playlists with the rest of the guides my other youtube channel social media discord and other useful stuff other than that thank you very much for watching it's been stan kosh have a good one bye